Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Sunday, April 14th. So exactly seven days ago, I turned 29. So that's why you haven't seen me because I've been getting old. Just kidding. Today, I really wanted to go over some of the plants that I'm currently obsessing over, which is honestly all of them, so I really had to narrow it down. I did pick up a few new plants on my birthday, and I also have some plants that are doing really well in my collection that I am currently obsessing over. So that's what we're looking at today. Let's get into it. I don't know who we should talk about first. Should we do a new plant first? Let's do a new one. Okay, the first plant that I picked up on my birthday last weekend is this Pilea Glocka. I had one of these in the past before. It was a lot bigger than this one. It did die a couple of years ago, so when I saw this one at my favorite plant shop, I had to pick it up. Anytime I see a Pilea Glocka, I always pick it up because it is very nostalgic for me. When I first started my plant collection, I think I had about 10 plants and this was one of them. And I was utterly obsessed because look at how tiny those leaves are. The color of the leaves kind of give me like sea blue, blue, pothos vibes. They're like that silver, blue, green hue that I love. But they're also on red vines, which are so beautiful. And if you have this plant at home, you have to look really close, but the leaves are all sparkly. So this plant is just magical to me. I actually have a video of me trying to transfer this plant from soil to semi-hydro. And that was definitely the hardest transfer I've ever done because of how tiny the little leaves are and all these little vines in here. You honestly couldn't pay me to do that again. So I'm going to be leaving this plant in soil. And eventually when it needs a repot, I'll slowly try to transfer this to semi-hydro like I'm doing with the rest of my newer plants in my collection right now. Not sure how that's gonna go, but stay tuned for it. Another thing that I remember about this plant when I had my bigger one, it blooms these really, really pretty orange flowers. So hopefully we can get this one to bloom. But honestly, when I got that plant back then, it was already blooming. And I never seen another bloom after that, so. This is not going to be surprising at all because it is my Alocasia Jacqueline. But when I showed you this plant, I think in my last video, it did not look like this. We did not have a leaf out like this, and this leaf is completely out, and look at the size of it. I mean, it's not completely unfurled, but it's working on it. Are you joking? This might not be my old Alocasia Jacqueline, but I have an Alocasia Jacqueline growing in semi-hydro, mind you. That's a lot of fluval, though. I think I need to, like, aerate that because the fluval is just so thick. But there's another little leaf coming out down there as well. Hopefully we get some more popping up soon, but just having this right here makes me so freaking happy. Definitely making up for the Hoya Opovada peduncle that I killed. You know, it's gone. But yeah guys, spring is here and look at Alocasia Jackie making a comeback. <gasps> I'm so freaking excited. If you guys saw my Instagram story recently, you saw that I posted that they had Alocasia Jacqueline at Lowe's. I did pick one up and I transferred that one to Semi Hydro completely, but I'll show you guys that later this week or maybe next week. My Philodendron El Chaco Red. My actual baby, but it's currently looking the best it ever has. So I'm definitely obsessed right now, especially because it has this beautiful new leaf coming out. Like, oh my God. Honestly, my Philodendron El Chaco Red is a little bit slower growing. It's not the slowest growing, but it's a little bit slower than I would like. But once it gets that leaf out, it's just like nothing I've ever seen before. Just mesmerizing. Look at how red that is. It's just so beautiful. She is still currently fully in fluval, and it's been really good for this plant. I really haven't had an issue. The moss does suck up a lot of the moisture, which really doesn't leave that much room for root rot, so. I'm really happy that she's doing so freaking well. But just a quick little root check, like look at how healthy those roots look. Just so freaking cool. This is another one of my current favorite plants in my collection, my Philodendron SP Columbia. Honestly, when I first got this Philodendron, I was like, ah, it's kind of basic, but you kind of have to warm up to the plant. Looking at this plant online versus in person, it's crazy, but I guess that's a good thing if you're interested in getting a Philodendron SP Columbia. Like it looks a little bit basic, but it's actually amazing. I'm not sure if you can see that the margin is tinted pink, but that stays there. Like all of these leaves have pink margins, like I've mentioned previously. And I'm just super obsessed with that. This entire plant is just absolutely gorgeous. 
and I really want to grow some big leaves. I would love to put this plant on a moss pole, but I'm gonna let it crawl. And then I'm gonna propagate it and put that piece on a moss pole. Everyone's happy. Another reason why I really like this plant is because I feel like it's really fast growing. Like, I just got this plant and this leaf came out, and you can tell there's another leaf already on its way. I'm really happy that this one's a little bit more faster growing than my other philodendrons, so I can have something else to obsess over while I'm waiting for another philodendron El Chaco red leaf to come out. You know? I honestly should have just named this video my favorite philodendron because the next two plants are philodendron. Uh, let me show you a new one first. That is not a philodendron, but I've had it before. A Pudica mimosa plant. So this is the plant that you can touch and it moves. I also got this at my favorite nursery. I don't know what people are calling it these days, but I call it a Pudica mimosa or the sensitive plant. If you're a real OG, you know that I actually grew these plants myself from seed once upon a time in perlite and they smelled really bad. They smelled like burnt popcorn after a while and I had to... They had to go. When I saw this one, I had to pick it up despite it looking like shit. It was only like $5, so I just grabbed it just so I can come home and touch it. So let's touch it and see if it does what it does. All of these right here are new, so I'm not gonna touch those ones, but for these ones, can you see it moving? <gasps> So cool. Actually, I'm not gonna touch it again because I really don't want this plant to die, but yeah. It moves and it's so cool. My mom got me this cup for my birthday last week, so I obviously had to put a plant in it because it's just so cute. Also, that Pudica mimosa is in soil as well. I have a lot of soil in my house right now and that is not good. I need to get some of it out. Anyways, honestly, when I got this plant, I did not think I was gonna be as obsessed. I think because it was kind of raggedy looking, like it was never nice until I propagated it and then put it into, what is it in? Fluve. My camera's overheating. We're back with Brandy. And yes, she is in Fluval. I kind of just stuck all of her propagations in here and I'm really liking what it's turning into. I feel like this would look really good as a hanging basket plant. I think I just discovered that I really like silvery plants because this is another one that has silver on it. And I'm just so obsessed, like, wow. I want a bigger brandy though. I'm about to start buying duplicates. I think this is the first spring I'll have a philodendron brandianum, so I can't wait to see how much it grows with the warmer weather. My last philodendron and the last plant I'm talking about, because I actually have to ask you a question about this one. God, it's so crazy looking, but this is the current state of my philodendron varicosum. And it's completely out of control. It's in a self-watering pot attached to two moss poles, and I really don't want to extend it again. So my question to you, since I just cut off all of the bottom leaves because I think they had spider mites and they were all yellow, so I cut them off and now the plant just resides at the top and most of those leaves are not even rooted in there. So should I repot this plant or propagate this plant or just leave it in here and let new leaves come out at the bottom since I cut off those leaves, they're probably gonna develop some new growth points down there and they're already rooted into the pole. So should I leave it alone and extend the pole? Or should I chop it because it looks crazy? I don't know, but it is my favorite because it just started putting out all of these pretty decent sized looking leaves. It's just been growing so fast lately, almost to the point where I can't keep up with it. So that's why I haven't extended the moss pole yet because I don't even know if that's what I should do. If I want it to mature, I should probably just extend the moss pole, right? Yeah, I probably won't even wait for your answer and just extend it. <laughs> I have so many more favorites than that. Honestly, I don't even know how many plants I have. I think I have over a hundred plants Definitely less than 200 plants, but over a hundred plants and most of them are my favorite You know, here's one that you rarely ever see my pink syngonium I don't know, but it looks like she's starting to pop off just a little bit I love a soft pink pretty plant like look at how pretty that is. It's almost flesh toned Which is kind of gross actually, but she just put out that new leaf and she puts out cool leaves like this sometimes. I really, really like this plant. This is on my desk in my office, so no one ever sees that. <laughs> that does bring me to the end of today's video. Give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Mother of Plants and on Etsy at Palace of Propagation. And until my next video, bye guys.